We're talking about the Shittas and the Hashkafas of the Baal Shem Tev, at least the kids and Imrits. And the points that I want to touch on today are the idea of Simcha and the idea of Ozev Tazev Ime, which are very, very basic um, changes in the Ashkof of the Helek of Baal Shem Tev. Kedem Kol, the Yina Simcha. The Baal Shem Tev obsessed over joy. And he saw Atzus and Moresh Chayra as being uh, essentially Klippa, as being from the Yetzir Hore. And I suppose the source of this particular idea, the source of the concept of Simcha that you have in Hasidus, is from the Kisvi Arizal. Everybody knows, we say, what's, what's weird about it is that this Arizal is actually a Rambam. The Rambam says almost exactly the same thing. The Rebbe has a Ha'ora, where he asks the question, why does the Alter Rebbe and Chavov quote the Arizal, when the Rambam says exactly the same thing. The Rambam says, in Sofich HaSukkah V'lov, Tachas HaShalavad HaShem L'Kecha B'Simcha Otu V'lov Merei V'Kev Adazei V'Echad. And even if a Yid learns Tain and does mitzvahs, but he does them without Simcha, he deserves for this, V'Avad HaTosei V'Echad, he deserves Achman L'San Tzadus. And the, the, the Arizal says the same idea. It's brought in Kisri Arizal. Rabbi Chaim Vital writes that Kol HaHasogei Shehisig Moiri, all of the incredible Madreges that Arizal reached, was all because of Simcha Shal Mitzvah. Rabbi Chaim Vital. By the Baal Shem Tev it says that all of the HaSogei Baal Shem Tev was Masig, was from Rev Tvilis, from Mater Mikvalat. By the Arizal it says that the Asogis, that the Arizal reached, was from Simcha Shal Mitzvah. The Rebbe used to mention, it says in the Shechon Arach Arizal, that Arizal never bargained over the price of a mitzvah. Whatever you told him, he paid. He says, a mitzvah you have to do. And the Simcha Shal Mitzvah, the Arizal gave the Arizal these mighty Dekah Asogis. And here's another example, yeah? Chabad is not into Rev Tvilis. We're not into writing to the mikvah 50 times, you know. Pain you get table 310 times. <laughs> you go into the mikvah, you push your finger up and down. The Rebbe asked, the Friedrich Rebbe, and the Friedrich Rebbe had asked the Rebbe Rashab, you know, there's a mini chsid, a mini yidin. The Rebbe Yom Kippur, you go to the mikveh three times. And, uh, but the Rebbe did not go to the mikveh three times. And um, I think it was the Rebbe Rashab who said, I saw two Lashenis. One Lashen long Russian was Al Tahit Tzadik Harbi, then it says Ephraim. And the other Lashen was Mizuchim Nishkem Panosa. Which means the Rebbe indicated that we're not looking for schoolers, you know, for magic tricks, for spiritual uh, shortcuts. That's how I understand that part. These are both are in the Rebbe's Rishimus. I, I repeated this to a Chassid Shayid that the Rebbe Rashab didn't go to Mikvah three times out of him Kippur, and he would snap back to me when he was a Rebbe. <laughs> in other words, we have to go to the Mikvah. But. The idea of mikveh, which by the Pelisha was much, much more. I mean, if you go back into the history of Labavit, you'll discover that the Pelisha went to the mikveh every day. Chabad Hasidim went to the mikveh, and if Shabbos, even in Labavit, the Baruch and Labavit went to the mikveh Monday and Thursday and every Shabbos. Going to mikveh every single day was an Oisnam Zach. You know, the Rebbe Rashab, the Chagav, I saw this, I saw this maybe from Zislin, that somebody mentioned to the Rebbe, they were making a new branch of Tem Chetmimim in Shedrin Midachter. And they were talking about that, that in order to have a yeshiva, you have to have a lake. So the Bachman should be able to table Monday, Thursday, out of Shabbos. So he said, Unvan Medaz. The Mashpiyah said, sometimes a person needs to go to Mikvah for other reasons. And the Rebbe Rashab trembled at the Tesel Gitan. Um, but what we, what we do follow is this Eifan Simch. That the uh, Arizal's Hasogis, Ruchnis de Kamadregis, came from Simcha, and by the Baal Shem Tev, the Indian of Igas Hashem de Simcha was unbelievably uh, primary. What's interesting is this we have one page, one blood, Ksaviat Kedish of the Helika Baal Shem Tev that's extant. There's one piece of paper that's known to exist on planet Earth, which is in the Ksaviat Kotra Helika Baal Shem Tev. That piece of paper is in the Rebbe's library. And it's a letter to the Toldos. The Toldos are In the Shivchei HaBar Shem Tev, that letter is printed with the Shinu Nusach. It's interesting. The Shivchei HaBar Shem Tev was written 
very close to the time Basham is passing away. It was published 40 years later, but it was written very close to Basham is passing away. And in the Shivcha Basham, that letter is quoted a little bit different than the Girsa, which is printed by us. I don't know how to explain it, but we have the Pashat Xavyat Kedish, the Helika Balshemtiv. It's printed in a lot of places. Uh, in, in the Balsham just tell us, Mashid in the Platz and Andere. And the token of that letter is the Balsham to the Tal Basham of Yasef. Tal Basham was a Gogol. It's a very, very big person. And like I mentioned to the other day, there's a Yesh Haman that he was much older than the Balsham And he was from the first great Tzadikim to join the movement. Like I told you, the Balsham negotiated Lamayel that he should have Shishim Gibayim. And it took him his whole Nasir, his whole 26 years as a Rebbe, to collect his 60 warriors, his 60 giants. From the first to join his movement was the Toldos. And the Toldos, Yank of Yasef, was a Ebed Alakim. Vashem Tev writes him a letter, stop fasting, stop being depressed. Ibn Hashem B'Simcha. To the Toldos, Yank of Yasef, to serve Hashem B'Simcha. But the Vashem Tev, the Yen HaSimcha was Oise Geveen Lech. And it's, it's a Uvda, it's a fact. That the Baal Shem Tov had Pashat Tansen, for Zingen and Tansen. The Baal Shem Tov's Nagina and Baal Shem Tov's Avoida involved Moidin de Kesimche. Himself personally and also from his Chasidim. And Yemont, by him, the idea of Simch was very, very important. And there's a very interesting psychological uh, way to say it. The Gra, the Vilna Gon, who was a Masmid Nifla, his Asmode is impossible to understand. It's so, literally, the Vilna Gaon used to learn 18 hours a day. Learn 18 hours a day. That means to say, in the other six, he ate and slept and took care of his needs. Acht and Shalom is less. His Hasmada was wunderbar. The Gra used to board up his windows. So the sunlight shouldn't come into his room. And he would learn by day with candlelight. It reveals the mahus of the person. The Gra was a Morshcheide. He was Beteva, that kind of a person. A Morshcheide is a person who's a masmid of the Beteva. He's naturally diligent. The Gra's a smother, was bleak vul. But he needed a fakvetch, the place. He couldn't deal with light. He couldn't deal with openness. He couldn't deal with freedom. It, it interfered with his tzimtzum. The Baal Shem Tev at Lib Gehat Licht. Shem Tev loved light. At night, the Baal would sometimes light hundreds of candles. And by day, he had windows. Was velichit. A Baal for Tzach Tevlin, to go to the mikveh. So, of course, the detail that we all forget is he would literally break ice. And Tevlin, an ice-cold river. Yeah. But he would push it light candles. It was like lichtik. Baal Tzach had alt lichtikkeit. And there's a correlation between joy and, and, and light and, and melancholy and... Darkness, and, and, and you see clearly the pressure, the personality of the people, the directions in which their lives went. The Balshemtiv was a freilich and mensch. The Rebbe once mentioned that in Fabrengen, that the Balshemtiv once went to table in the mikveh, and you need to have candles. And the Shamish after the Balshemtiv, the Rebbe, the candles are burning out. So the Balshemtiv reached out and he grabbed icicles. There were ice. You know how ice can form if it drips. He had a long, long strips of ice. He broke them off and says, Oh, here's candles. They stuck them in the snow and they lit them and they burned. <laughs> That's a nest. That's what the Baal Shem Tev machen. But the point is, by the Baal Shem Tev, this was a symptom of his shita of the Abed HaShem Tev Mitzvah Simcha. And of course, in Chassidus Chabad, there's Kama Bekama Dugmois. In Chassidus, the story of history of Chassidus, where the idea of Simcha was paid its all good that if a person wants to solve problems, one of the ages to solving problems is the Inyan HaSimcha. And there's a long Arichas de Kasipur, which I don't know all the details of at the moment. It's on the Kutta de Burim. But the Kitzer of the Maisa was that the middle of Rebbe had a, um, a whole complicated and very, very sophisticated order in Lubavitch. The middle of Rebbe had cavalry and horses. Horses, a stable of horses. And Hasidim used to do maneuvers, they would do tricks. The middle of Rebbe had a kapelje, which was an orchestra and a choir. And uh, by the middle of Rebbe's given sight, the Baal Tev, he would come out and he would ask, the, they, they would play, and he would sit and listen. What the middle of Rebbe, but I'm sure it wasn't entertainment, it was a nini ruchni yaliki. And all that said, the maneuvers of the horses. The middle of Rebbe came out one day onto his porch, and he said that the Yungalai, the Chassidim, would do the maneuvers on the horses, should do their thing. 
and they started to perform. And the middle of the Chassidim should sing and dance and be besimcha gedeila. And, um, and he encouraged very much it should be besimcha. And as the event progressed, someone came running to the middle of and told the middle of that Reb Nochem, his own son, had fallen from his horse and he was trampled on some of the horse. Which meant to say that he was in a mat of, of very, very serious Bakuach Nefesh. And the middle of only response was that the Chassidim should be more besimcha. There's all tanks, there's all zingin, there should be a gvaldik besimcha by the Chassidim. And they kept on telling him how dire his the matter of his son is, and his reaction was. And the end of the story was they finally came and told him that they don't know how, but the Bdochim was feeling better. So he said, okay, now he could stop. And the middle of it explained later that he saw Poshta Kitrog and his own son. He saw that the Bdochim was a Sakon. And he decided that Simcha paid its gather, that he's going to solve, he's going to conquer, he's going to defeat. This Dovara through Simcha. And the fact of the matter was that Abnacham, the middle of his son, had Mudinik Arichas Yomim. He lived many, 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 many years. So it worked. <laughs> Bottom line is, Simcha works. By the way, Derek Agav, does anybody know what is the mocker of the so called Maimon Ghazal? Simcha paid it together. Who said it first? Simcha paid it together. In the Mamari Hasidus, they're Mitzayan to Samach to Samach and Eshnun Zayan from the Rebbe Rashab. Everybody assumes Simcha Peretz Ged is a Maimah Chazal. It may be a Maimah Chazal from the Baal Shem Terebe, from the Hal Terebe. I don't know if, 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 if there's such a Medrish or such a... Simcha Peretz Ged, is there a source for Simcha Peretz Ged in, from the Chazal or even from the Rishonim? Because my mother Hasidus don't quote a source. This is the Derech Agam. Well, if this was one of the most important about the Shonim and Simcha. And of course, as you guys know, the twin, the corollary, the other side of the coin of Simcha is Anova. Vayoswa, Anova, and Bahavaya Simcha. There's a connection between Anivis and Simcha. And this, this of course, you read in the Lange Brief, the famous long letter from the Rebbe, for the Friedrich Rebbe, which he wrote to the Rebbe. And the Rechagav, then, in the new volume of Igor Kedish, was printed. The Friedrich Rebbe writes a letter to the Rebbe. And he says to the Rebbe, that, uh, give it to the Bobe, to the Rebbe Sashtan Asara. She'll only need it for a few days to read the whole letter and she'll have a lot of nachas. The Fidik had written the Rebetzin a long, long letter. He never finished it. So when the letter was written, he gave it to the Rebetzin unfinished and he said to the Rebetzin, to his daughter, do me a favor, show it to my mother. And of course, in that letter, you have this chosset um, whose name is Reb Mordechai. Reb Mordechai is the Talmud of the Helik of Baal Shem Tev. And he has two friends. One of his two friends is Reb Chaim. And he goes to find Reb Chaim, and he wants to be Makarov in Tachsidis. It's a Gan Sarich and Sabri, a Sipo, with so many Pirti Pratim, it's incredible. In that story, a Pasha dreams that he had, that the Fidi Kebbe writes. And the spirit of it all is he meets Reb Chaim. Reb Chaim has blinders on his eyes, cotton in his ears, he stuffs something up his nose, he should have no Chushim, and he sits as a Fakvetched. And when he meets his old friend, he says to him, it's 20-something years that I'm sitting here, but precious. So Fidel so, so, describes that Mordechai wanted to grab his friend and shake him and say, take the cotton out of your ears, take the mask off your eyes, Zaya Mentrialovich, <laughs> stop it, be a person. The essence of the issue was that when a person serves the Eberstein with such a fakvetch guy, He's pushed so fully consumed with himself. Or you, it's not the Abish, it's you. As opposed to when you allow yourself simcha, the simcha allows you to forget about yourself. And as the long letter develops, you see the Chaim developing a, a, a respect for the Mordechai, his friend. And it expresses itself as the Hamot Yom Kippur, it's Megan Yarikut. After Yom Kippur, the whole avoid Yom Kippur. These were real Jews. They, in the 24 hours a day, they fought, they served the Abish name. They danced. They danced to celebrate the, you know, Avodas Hashem. The idea of simcha. Simcha makes you forget all the other. But the Baal Shem Tov in a simcha was modernik. And of course, you see this. You know, I suppose you could say that the the, the most powerful example of the Yina simcha is the Rebbe, our Rebbe. And what's so interesting about it is that the Rebbe himself said of himself that Beteva is a marshchene. He's not Beteva a freilach a person. And but everything about the Rebbe was you know, changing that nature. You know, the Rebbe was a man who had unbelievable simcha, and he oozed, and he radiated, and he roused in other people, this avoid of serving Hashem, simcha, simcha. 
So this is one thing I wanted to mention. And of course, the other thing I wanted to mention was the idea of Ozev Tazev Ime. The, the famous Tehis Abal Shemti, which says in Ayyem Yeh, that says, Kitira Chameh, that a person is going to examine, this is also, by the way, the language of Riv, a person is going to examine his own Chameh, his own Chumris, his own Gashmits. And you will see, say, that your goof hates you, it's your enemy. You want to serve the Ebishtir, and your hell of a Hesse, what doesn't allow you to serve the Ebishtir, is your goof. So you're going to think that the way to come closer to the Ebishtir is by punishing the goof, by making yourself suffer, by, uh, by fasting, and with all kinds of other afflictions on the body, in the belief that if I'll punish my goof, I'll get the goof out of the way, the Nisham will be able to shine. Kipiskam kemaimen ayadua. Chul should the gufa took for the nishma. So it's a maimah. I think that's a maimah chazal. If the guf is weaker, the nisham is going to be stronger. But the balsham to the name azif tazev ime. You have to watch your health. You have to work with the guf. There's a lashon in hayyim yim. The Rebbe Rashab on the bizim of an hand. He pointed at his fingers. Mekenzech garnished farstil. We forget the kaita. It's like you gossen of them hand. You have no idea how much God there is. God spilled for the physical hand of ayid. This is in Tehid Shalom. It's not in the Yemi. You have to work with Guf. Azev Tazevim. And you have, for this you have many, many examples. First of all, you have the Maise that, uh, with the Basham from the Toldos. The letter that I mentioned to you before. That he writes to the Toldos that he should stop fasting. And of course, the, the most powerful dogma for this is the struggle that went on between the Mazitcha Magid and his son of Ram the Malach. Ram the Malach. Ram the Malach was Kishmai Kainu. He was a Malach. And he fasted constantly. And he did all kinds of Sigufa. I heard from a Pailashi that I know that Macholi, what did the Malach eat every day for his food? The skin of a pigeon. Pigeons are not very big, they're not smaller than chickens. And he ate the skin. Now, how, forget about taste, how nutritious is that? <laughs> what kind of nutrients do you get from the skin? This was my, the man ate nothing. And he punished his goof. And he was a. Uh, he served Hashem and loved him. And, and the fact of the matter is, but Hateva, how old was Rana Malach when he passed away? How old? Maximum, maximum, 36. Maximum 36 years old. Passed away very, very young. And the Magid used to protest the fact that he didn't watch his health, that he didn't take care of his goof. Magid, you have to watch your goof. And the Malach once said, Rana Malach once said, I don't have an obligation to put aside the wishes of my Father in heaven for my father of the flesh. From my flesh in Tatan. So when the Alter Rebbe heard that the, the Ram the Malach referred to his father the Maggid as a flesh in Tatan, as a father of the flesh, he cried, How could you call the Mazitcha Maggid a flesh in Tatan? In the Tzavod, there's a Tzavod that the Maggid spoke. The, the Maggid left the Tzavod for his son and Bechlal for the Talmudim, but it was Bedibur, it was spoken and not written. And the Chavraya Kaddisha wrote it down and endorsed it. They signed it. We call for notarizing it. You have, it the the Tzavah is printed in Kamam Kamis. And in that Tzavah, you have many different details. Hira said the Mazitra Magid left for his son, the Malach. And one of them was, you have to watch your health. While a claim, Lechelein Guf, is a greater Lechelein than the Shaman. A small hole in the body is a huge gape in the soul. In other words, if the Guf is not healthy, then he can't serve the Abishta properly. The Guf of Zayn Gantz. This is a Yesod and Chasidus. Mendav Zayn Gizun. We don't believe in punishing the body and suffering. You have to be healthy. One of the Bacham asked me last night, how do you reconcile that with the fact that the Rabbeim were all fasting? <laughs> they were telling us, and I Be'emis don't know the explanation. But the Derech and the Sheet of Chasidus is, a person has to watch his health. And Faket, when you're healthy, you can serve the Abish. The Rebbe always quoted the Ramah. Faket, this, this, the Mokar is the Ramah. Hayei Saguf, Bori Visholem, Medarchi Hashem Hu. And the Rebbe said that you have to add one word to the Ramah. Without you avoid the Hashem who. If you're going to serve the Eibishter, you have to be healthy. Because how could you serve the Eibishter if you have a Michosh and you don't feel well and so forth and so on? These two shittas. You know, by the early Mekubalim, the Mr. Chassidi Ashkenaz, they believe that you have to punish the body and you have to fast and you have to sit on nests of meat-eating ants and you have to roll in the snow. All kinds of Yusudim to be Mezachach, the person. And the Baal had a different shita, the Baal had a different derech. And by Chsidim and by this was a very, very, very big yesod. And the Bashem Tafat is Gemont, of hitting the goof. Maybe she gave my goof, that from hitting. So those are two points that I wanted to mention. And I already told you the story, I don't, I, it's no point in repeating the story, but I told you the story about the, this Pasha Tayyid. 
It's in the Kutu Deburim, who wanted to be Matzliach and Teireh. So he learned from a visitor, from a passerby, from an Oirech, that the way to open up your mind to Teireh is to make yourself suffer. So he would go, he would work a half a day in his shop, and then he would go out into the forest and sit on the nest of ants and say, till him and cry. And the Baal Tov met him, and Baal Tov asked him what he's doing. So he told the Baal Tov that he's punishing his goof because he's hoping that this will affect Psach Libi Besed Secha, he should be able to learn Teireh. And the Baal Tov said, this is not a good approach, I'm sorry, I have a better way. And the Baal Tov told him, give me all of your wealth and I'll teach you the whole Teireh. And that was the end of the story that he became a tzaddik. I told you the story a few weeks ago. But this is a, a, an example, and the Rubi Ribui Dugmois for this idea that Prasidnat Megamont of Alam al the Gizun. A person has to watch his health, a person is not allowed to destroy his goof. The Abish gave you a goof. It's, 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 it, a pitel, you have to watch your goof. And of course, on Pnimi is the Kamadregis, is because the goof is a Kali Philokos, and so forth. Now, another thing that I want to mention is, of course, the preciousness of Ayid, the Tayyakite from Ayid. And this, of course, lies at the very, very heart of Hasidus. Okay, I'll say it to you this way. I am a Darsh. I give speeches. I'm a Darsh. I make speeches. So when you're a Darsh, you have to find provocative ways to say simple things. Sometimes you have, you know, it's not just enough to say it. You say it the way that gets people's attention. And this is one of the ideas which I really believe is true. If you wanted to get at what is Hasidus, People are still not sure what Hasidus is. I mean, Hasidus is, you know, if, if the birth date of Hasidus is uh, Tav Tzad Dalet, Hasidus is 270 years old. Almost 280 years old, 278 years old. Hasidus has been around for a very, very long time. Tav Tzad Dalet, Tav Kuf Tzad Dalet, Tav Reish Tzad Dalet, and I have a whole in Tav Shinayim Beis. It's almost 280 years old. And Adayi Mazay, people have a very hard time saying themselves, so what really is Hasidus? Hasidus Mihu, what is it? And I think a legitimate way of articulating the very essence of Hasidus is the following statement. Hasidus shifted the center of gravity of Yiddishkeit. And gravity, of course, means weight. But gravity also means seriousness. Hasidus shifted the center of gravity of Yiddishkeit away from Tehidim Mitzvahs to a Yid. In other words, until Hasidus, Sof Kol Sof Yiddishkeit is about Tehidim Mitzvahs. Now obviously, only a Yid could learn Tehidim Mitzvahs. A guy does Tehidim Mitzvahs is not the same Indian. But you were a Yid because of your Tehidim Mitzvahs. In Hasidus, it's Faked. Your Tehidim Mitzvahs is because you're a Yid. And as a result, in Hasidus, the most precious thing is a yid. It doesn't make a difference what kind of a yid he is. It doesn't make a difference whether he has any shaykh of teir and mitzvah whatsoever because the, the inyan of Yiddishkeit is not the teir and mitzvah. The inyan of Yiddishkeit is the yid. The teir and mitzvah is a secondary inyan. The Rebbe spoke a sikha in the son of Tashin and Aleph. It's, it's a pretty radical sikha. <laughs> yeah. It's Pashas Kiseite. It says in Pashas Kiseite, Kiseite la mochom that you're going to go out on a war against your enemies. So of course, Kisei Tzal Mechama Levecha, Rashi says, B'mechama Tzal Shusha Kosom Adabah, you're going to a war. Chassidah says, Kisei Tzal Mechama Levecha goes when the Neshama comes into this goof. The Neshama comes out into this world, the Neshama is engaged in a war. Zakt Rashi, B'mechama Tzal Shusha Kosom Adabah. When the Neshama comes into this world, and he's involved in a Mechama, it's a Mechama Tzal Shusha. What's meant us? So the Rebbe Taichd. The purpose of a neshama coming into this world is to be here. If, on top of being here, the neshama does in Yadam Tehid and Mitzvahs, that's the shus. <laughs> that's, that's already gravy. It's, it's a dividend. It's a profit. In other words, a neshama comes into this world and doesn't learn one word of the single mitzvah. That's the kavana. Because the most powerful thing in the Abishtah's purpose is not the Tehid and Mitzvah of a Yid, but the Etzim Metzias of a Yid. I told you this before, the Middle Rebbe once said, You heard in Gansen, can have Sogen nicht. Wie viel das ist Tehid la Meila? An Neshom in a Guf, noch ein Rege. You have no idea how much it means to the Ebesh here. That a Neshom should stay in a Guf for one more second. So in, in Tchsidus, the most important thing is the Tehid and of a Yid. And the truth of the matter is, it's a Moedendike revolution. It's an unbelievable revolution. It's a Moedendike revolution. And the Rebbe has a Sikhe, in the early Chalakam Rukut Asiris, 
where the Rebbe said that there's three madregas in the Vaflech Kamech the Baal Shem Tev, the Magid, and the Alter Rebbe. The Baal Shem Tev said, What's made the Hafla Echel Kabaycha? What is the Kamecha that you have to love a Jew that you never saw, you never met? Maybe Layam. The Mizitcher Magid said, He said, the, the Shadu by the Mizitcher Magid was that the Talmudim used to take turns being his Mishadis. They took turns serving him. And during the Tkufa that you were, the Mishadis were mamish with the Magid all the time. So during the Tkufa that Rabelech, Rebbe Rabelech, Rabelech Mlejensk, was the Mishamash of the Mizitcher Magid, the Magid suddenly says to him, Hers Melech, was Mizok to the Mesifta de Rikir. You hear Melech, the Magid heard what's going on the Melech. You heard what they said, Mesifta de Rikir. Al Rehapta Recha Kamoicha meant, Am Dav Libab Ma Rosh Agam Avi Atadagam. Dav Zal Bechem, you have to love a complete Rosh the same way you love a complete Tzadik. So this is more than the Baal Shem Tev. Because it's not just saying you have to love every Jew, if love every Jew the same. And the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, based on Kulam Matimeth, Abba Chalikulana, Miyadeg, Lachlosan. In other words, it's not the Pshat that you have to love the Russia like the Tzadik. There's no such thing as the Russia and the Tzadik. They're all the same. In Hasidis, we have to lech al the preciousness of a Jew is believable. And of course, it's never been more revealed than the last in our generation. So many Yidin went away from Yiddishkeit. Came Fry. And in the beginning of this movement of going away from Yiddishkeit, you could claim and argue that there's an infant up because people went away from Yiddishkeit on principle. Judaism was the cause of all their tzaddas. And it's all superstition. And the Friedrich Rebbe undertook a shita of being makarev as a yiruf and a friya yidin. So of course you know that in the Satmir the communities in the in the so called Haredi world they tiny not allowed to make out of them, maybe the Velaimailin and so forth and so on. So of course the, the, the famous vart from the Fidik that everybody knows, a yid came to the Fidik and said, How could you be Makar of this person? This person is in the category of Medidin Velaimailin, that you have to bring about his Hepechachaim is a bad guy. So the Fidik Rebbe said the Shulchan Aruch has four sections. And the last of the four sections is a Khesh Mishpat. And in the Chesh Mishpat, the last halacha, the Chesh Mishpat, is a halacha of Meridim and Leimah. The Fidik Rebbe says, I want to, I'm working my way through the Shulchan Aruch. I haven't reached the end yet. The Vaila, I haven't reached that din that you have to have to be made in the Maila Yid. And then there's a story which went around Mishlang, also a very nice story, that the, um, the Rebbe came downstairs from Fidik Rebbe upstairs. And he saw two Bachrim standing under the steps. And the Rebbe, the Rebbe said this about himself. I heard this myself many times in the Rebbe. The Rebbe said, if the Friedrich Rebbe told him something, the Friedrich Rebbe knew that sooner or later the whole world is going to know. Because the Rebbe had such a gishmak, such a chayis, in repeating a vart that he heard from Friedrich Rebbe. So the Rebbe came downstairs, and he sees two Bachrim, so he walks up to them, and he tells them, I'm coming now from Friedrich Rebbe. And I want to tell you what I just heard. The people came into 770 and they complained to the Rebbe, how come the Friedrich Rebbe is Makar of the Frey? Or as the Rebbe put it, how come he's Makar of Frey? The Rebbe was involved with all kinds of people. Amongst the people whom the Rebbe was involved with, there were Yidin that you could say it's, it's a Shaila whether you allowed to Bechal be Makar of them. So he complained, this person went to the Rebbe, how come the Rebbe is Makar of Zalchi Yidin? So the Rebbe didn't know what to say. So he went into the Friedrich Rebbe and he asked the Friedrich Rebbe what's how the Friedrich Rebbe. So the Friedrich Rebbe gave him a dogma. He says, parents have children. He says, Kedem call the nature of the love between parents and children is such that if you have many children, it doesn't diminish the love for an individual child. In other words, if you have a lot of children, it's not the fact you have to spread the love in many parts. You love each child, bleakful. Because the nature of the love from parents to children is such that it's an echaz deke ahava, and you have more children, so you love them all, bleakful. But if chas v'shalom, a person has a child who's not well, or mazogin, he's missing an arm, or he cannot see, or he cannot walk. So the reality is that although every parent loves every child, bleakful, when you have a child, who's ill, there's a special kind of love. In other words, he was trying to be medayik. It doesn't mean that the, children's, the other children's love is less. It's also believable, but it's still special. And he said the nimsho, if you have a Yiddish akin, he doesn't have an arm. 
You have a Yiddish, a person doesn't go to shul, hot So they forget, not only do you love that Yid also, but you have to have a very, very special love for this Yid. The idea of loving every Jew no matter what. And I'll just finish with the story that was told. It's a story with the Rebbe, it's not a story from the Baal Shem Tov, but it's perfectly apropos. It says, Ami Moedin Dekemaise. The story was printed the week after Gimel Tammuz. The first Kvach that came out after Gimel Tammuz had this such a long, long story. And the story, Aradov publishes a story and he quotes a man by the name of Greenwald. But the, he has a name, the name of the story of the Yid named Greenwald. It's a long story that happened over many, many years, but it's a Moedin Dekemaise. And the story goes like this, that this man, Greenwald's father, was a younger Bacharel, and he was related to the Menachem Zembe. The Menachem Zembe was from the greatest Goinim in Poland. He was a Goan Oilam, he was a Gerer Chosset, he was a Chsidi Shayid, and uh, his nephew was this Greenwald's father. But at the Makarim Gevesen, they spent time together. When the Rebbe got married, our Rebbe got married, so the Friedrich Rebbe sent the Menachem Zembe an invitation to the Chasana. And the Menachem Zembe was talking about the Rebbe's Chasana. And when Menachem Zembe came to the Rebbe's Chasana, he took along his nephew, this Greenwald. During the Chasana, the Menachem Zembe found a few minutes to talk to the Rebbe in learning. So he hastened, people were speaking at the Rebbe's a big gone. But that was not the Menachem Zembe, that was the Rebbe Shapiro. And the Menachem Zembe asked the Rebbe permission if he could come to him the next day in his hotel to continue the conversation. And the Rebbe agreed. So the next day, this Greenwald, young man, this Bachar Greenwald came with his uncle, the Menachem Zembe, to the, to the Rebbe's hotel where he was staying. But he had to He didn't understand the learning very much. When the conversation finished, the Menachem Zembe turned to the Rebbe and said, this is my nephew, and his kach, kach, Greenwald. The Rebbe gave him shalom. The Rebbe says to him, when two Jewish people meet, that's when they say, not vartere. So the Rebbe says, I want to ask you a question. How come the fifth lichtel of Hanukkah, the fifth night of Hanukkah, can never be on Shabbos? So he says he doesn't know. So the Rebbe answers him because the fifth night of Hanukkah shows on the greatest darkness. Guess the question. When the Kech, when the Hanukkah licht is, the power of the Hanukkah licht is that no matter how deep a Choshech a person may find himself in, see in Varsha, see in London. When he's living in Varsha, he's living in London. The Koyach of the Hanukkah licht could schlep him out of that darkness and bring him into a Maimed the Matzav of Oyer. This Bacha Greenwald got married and he had a family. And then the war came, the Holocaust came, the Shoya came, the Chmonazan. And he lost everything. He lost his wife, he lost his children. After the war, is he come in America? And he was living in New York. He had a relative here. And someone was Matziah that he is going to get married again, especially under the current conditions. He should go to the rabbi to get a brach. It's in Friedrich and Rebbe. So he was brought by an uncle of his to 770 um, for a bracha for his chasana. And he went into the field of the Rebbe, and I'm sure it was very, very emotional. And the Rebbe gave him Valdike brachas. And he mentioned to the field of the Rebbe that he was by the Rebbe's chasana. So the field of the Rebbe says, my, my, nephew, my son-in-law is here, go downstairs and say, Shalom Aleichem. So he went downstairs and he went from Friedrich to the Rebbe, to the Ramash, and he gave Shalom. And the Rebbe recognized him right away. Right away. No, Rebbe Gang and Fan said, Yah, 20 years passed, we meet again. And they talked a few minutes, and then the Rebbe says to him, You know, when you didn't meet the Fazog Nadvartere, how come the fifth night of Hanukkah can never be shot? And the man was Mishtoimim. He says, Because Hanukkah, the fifth night of Hanukkah goes in the greatest darkness. And the Kech of the Hanukkah Lech is so strong that no matter Viv Favor from it is, see in New York, see in London, <laughs> whether you're living in New York, you're living in London, the Kech of the Hanukkah Lech is from the Gesta Cheshit. Anyway, this person got married and he moved to Toronto. Fast forward 20 years, and his son is getting married. Tachta Tzizich, 
I met the Rebbe by my chasana. I'd like my son. But in Toronto, he was involved in the Satmar Kehila. And there was big kindness to the Rebbe. I mean, forget about Tzayoyinus. They felt he's not going to be Makala Freya. You know, Freya didn't, you know, who needs them? They're, they're whole, it's a different sheet of a halal. And um, he called up 77 and he asked to make an appointment to the Rebbe. And of course, he was told it's not Shaykhis. And he told Rabbi Chadok of this connection he had to the Rebbe from so many years before. And he was told he has a right to go into the I'll give him permission, let him go in, but one minute, just the bracha, and Laman Hashem, he shouldn't ask any questions of the Rebbe. He's not allowed to say anything, just a right in a race. He came to New York, he took his son into the Rebbe, as soon as he walked in, the Rebbe smiled and says, another 20 years have passed, it's time that we meet again. And the Rebbe gives him brachas. And then he says to the Rebbe, I was warned by the mosquitoes that I'm not allowed to ask any questions. But can I ask a question anyway? So the Rebbe says to him, The Shver Tachdir to Mir Gishikt. The Fili Gebe sent you to me, the Gharai, that I have to answer your questions. Ask. So he says to the Rebbe that he lives in a Satmar Kehila. And although he has very warm feelings for Labavit, he has incredible pressure. Mishavayde. Hayitokhin, the Labavit Rebbe is Makar Fraye. So the Friedrich here says, the Rebbe says to him, Dein shochet de kanoi, your neighbor, the zealot. And of course, there was the Ruch HaKedosh, the Rebbe knew from whom he was hearing this time. If it was his child, Rachman al-Etzlan, that's a rab from Yiddish and Veg, would he say, Amatana Shom Tom et Fraye, Meridim Vele Meilin? Or would he say, Mipsorcha al Salim, don't neglect your own children, your own family. But the Friedrich Rebbe, every child, every Yid was his own child. The man's about to walk out. The Rebbe says, Why can't the fifth Marachanika be Shabbos? The man was Ois Mensch. And they repeat exactly the same Tere. That it, it's Joseph in the greatest darkness. And the of the Chanukah left and Rish left from the Gesta Cheshch. And he says, "Simigifinzich in Toronto, see in London." He was living in Toronto, and he leaves. Ten or eleven years later, he's traveling to London to a chasana, and he's approached by that neighbor who had complained to him. The same neighbor had complained to him. How you talking? There's a guy approaches him and says to him, "I need you a favor." He says, nobody here knows this, it's a secret. But I have a daughter, and she's living in London. And I don't even know where she is. Are you going to be in London? And you have a shaykh with Labavich. It was two in Kirov. If you could do something to help my daughter... I would be very appreciative. Anyway, he goes to London. What does he know about finding a girl who's living with a guy? Rabbi Glick, Allah was a, they called him the Rebbe's roving shliach. He was a very interesting Jew. He was put in contact with this person. And he told him, I'll see what I can do. He stayed in London for nine, ten days. It was a chasenim, tashevet, rachasavot. A few days later, Rabbi Glick calls him. And he says to him, come to my house right now. Sure. So he comes to his house. And the girl is sitting there. And she's crying. He has no idea how he found her. He has no idea what he did. The bottom line is, he talked her out of marrying this boy. And he looks over. And there are five candidates. That's finished. Sure. But the story doesn't finish. I forgot to mention to you that when he went to the Rebbe, he went with his son's chasen. And the Rebbe gave him a brach. As he was afraid by the chasen of his enikel, that he should celebrate the chasen of his grandson and to give a survivor, such a brother, a survivor should marry of his kid to shine on this. He should be with the chasen of an enikel. So in Tavshin, Mem Tes, he came to New York for his grandson's wedding. He was an old man by this point. And he got a line for dollars. And he comes up to the Rebbe. And the Rebbe recognizes him right away. And the Rebbe tells him, Dear Gang, it's time to see each other again. 
don't know how he did this by dollars, but he somehow managed to tell the Rebbe this story. He said, but the Rebbe is chasen. The Rebbe told my ma'asim it al fifth lichtel. The didn't mature for 50 years. The Rebbe told him a ma'asim by his chasen. The Rebbe was 27 years old, yeah. The Rebbe was 26 years old. And the Rebbe told him a ma'asim that in Tafshin Lametes in 1979, the Nevoah Pasha, the Ruch HaKedosh, the Rebbe materialized, matured. So it's some sugar in the mice. <laughs> so the Rebbe says to him, no, the Shveret Gahat Avait and Cook. The Shveret Gahat. He says, the Fiyadi Gerebbe Gahat Avait and Cook. Okay, sure. Anyway, but this is how Chassidim always understand it. There's no such thing as a bad Jew. And you know what? It's very, very hard to raise ourselves to this Madrega. But that's how the Rebbe looked at Yidin, you know? The Fiyadi Gerebbe Gahat Ayid. He used to travel to him on Shabbos. With his car. And he parked his car a few houses in the same. And the Rebbe told him, The story goes that one year he came late, Rosh Hashanah. And the Rebbe waited for him for Tkiyas. And Lakewood was burning. Burning. I mean, there was no love from Lakewood to Lubavitch to start with. But it was known, it was a, it was a, it was a dovem of fortune, the Friedrich Rebbe waited for Machal Shabbos to come with his car for Tkiyas. And the Rebbe was told about this. That he's causing himself trouble in Makara Fazam in Yidin. So the Friedrich Rebbe said, Mephashtet nish meine Mensch. People don't understand my people. I heard this from my feet from him, Rabbi Lipska, that he used to come to the Rebbe also with a car. And one Shabbos, the Rebbe said to him, Lege weg Shlislach, put the keys down on the table. Which meant, Achlata, that he's no longer going to drive on Shabbos. So he put his keys on the table. And he died that week, before the next Shabbos. Mephashtet. Mices. Okay.